Good afternoon. It's not so easy after lunch. <laughs> Sorry for that, and thank you to God who uh, is shepherding us and guiding us all the time. And uh, if I'm here, it's from God, because the providence made that Neville came to visit us in this small clinic. Nobody knows about this small clinic, but it's the providence that Neville came, and I am here with you from Lebanon to tell you something about our daily life in Lebanon and about who I am and why I am working with the Iraqi refugees. Before Iraqi refugees, I was working with Shia refugees with the war of Israel in 2006. We have welcomed a lot of Shia refugees and now Iraqi refugees and Syrian refugees. It's our mission, not our destiny. It is our mission in this small country, Lebanon. And um, I start with um, one person is more precious than the whole world, said Mary Ephrasia, our founders. And I am leaving this in uh, my daily life because up to the, in the um, door of the clinic, I put a phrase also, religion is for God, but this dispensary is open for everybody behind her religion or her culture or her nationality. He is a person, he is precious. That's why I deal with this every day in my life. And um, like I'm a good shepherd sister, as an international congregation of religious women in the Roman Catholic Church, numbering almost 3,655 persons present in 72 countries, in five countries. As religious, we are called to a mission of reconciliation, like said our bishop. And more and more people are joining with us in different ways. For example, lay associate of the Good Shepherd. They are present here today. I thank them. Friends of the Good Shepherd, volunteers of the Good Shepherd, and others. Our service is particularly with women and the children who have been wounded by life circumstance and live in the age of society. Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. He is the true model whom we must imitate, said Mary Ephrasia. The spirituality of the congregation emphasizes the immense love of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, for each individual person. The mission of the congregation is to be a presence of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. And now in Lebanon, the Good Shepherd in Lebanon, since 1830-83, the Good Shepherd sisters have worked in Middle East, Lebanon, and we have found it in Syria since 28 years. It was the war between Syria and Lebanon. We found it Syria like a sign of reconciliation and relationship with people in Syria. We have worked with marginalized people, especially children, girls, and women who are victims of violence, discrimination, abuse, and poverty. This day, of course, we are called to work more and more with the refugee, Iraqi, and Syrian.
We have worked to protect women, abused women, and help them to understand their basic rights. Like you know, as you know, in the Arabic country, women are second. They don't have all the time, all the rights. And with children, through our shelters, we have been able to give virtual protection to vulnerable children and reinforce their environment. Throughout our country's history of civil war, we have helped and cared for many internal displaced people. As you know, the war in Lebanon started in 1975. I was nine years old. I never experienced peace in my country. And more recently, we have provided psychological support, orientation, medical services, and essential welfare services to thousands of Iraqi refugees. We have worked in partnership with other NGO. We have provided access to essential primary health care for those most unfortunate. In the last year, approximately 5,000 individuals access our health care facilities. Every day, around 700 to 200 patients visit our dispensary. And now I'll give you a, a little idea about my mission. I have been in this dispensary from 2005. Like I said, I, um, the dispensary was founded in 1987, but we took it in charge like Good Shepherd Sister in 2005 to take care about the refugees from Dahi. The global objective of the dispensary is to offer the best primary health care services to the large marginalized population of the region because in Lebanon it's very expensive. The health services are very expensive. And uh, it's a very good structure because we are dealing with a big university in Lebanon and we are supposed to give a good, good quality of service to the poor of poor. I have a dream that if I can't, if people can't pay the health service, that's what I have to give them a good quality of service. The dispensary St. Anthony is quite unique in Lebanon for its location and the population that it serves, it's equivalently the only affordable health service in Rwaiset area and provided access to medical care for those most unfortunate. Currently, the number of the patient is 100 per day. 50% children, 30% women, and 20% men. And is unique because we are serving in the Shia area, serving Christian people, Muslim people, and Iraqi refugees and Syrian refugees, all are welcomed in our humble structure. Like uh, a humble structure, we are not known by the state, not known by the Ministry of Health. We only are supported by our congregation and our beneficiary, like aid to the church in need. We have big, huge of uh, needs in medical concern, in psychological concern, and in humanitarian concern also. I would like to um, 
give you an idea about the Syrian refugees actually in the dispensary. Let the arms stop the peal of the Pope for Syria. You heard about it. And he said, how many more sufferings would have to be inflicted before they come to a political solution to the crisis? Like said Excellency, around 7 million individuals need humanitarian assistance. More than 4 million point five are displaced persons in their proper country. More and more people are searching for a shelter outside Syria, like Lebanon, Jordan, Turkey, or otherwise. That is why the Pontifical Council called for supporting even financially the effort of humanitarian assistance and of research for peace in order to a desirable reconstruction of broken and destroyed country. And like Excellency said, the Christians of Syria are forced sometimes to leave Syria because of the situation of the crisis. They are not the only uh, minority that are anxious about their future in Syria. All other minorities are anxious. The actual situation, approximately 2 million 500,000 persons in Syria have lost their homes and their means of substance and fled to safer areas since the beginning of the uprising. The social need with Syrian refugees at St. Anthony Dispensary. The Syrian population who come to the clinic are displaced they come from different areas in Syria, mainly Daraa, Deir Zur, Damascus, Homs, Hamad, and Aleppo, where the war is fierce and bloody. They left their destroyed home and some of them, of their family, to escape death. Most of the displaced Syrians are women who seek for different kinds of help and assistance due to their difficult situation in Lebanon, where life is very expensive for Lebanese too. Syrian displaced are suffering in different levels. Social, they live in a very difficult house condition. 20 to 25 persons in one house, which lead to other serious problems on the social level malfunction of the family, roles, confusion, increase of the risk of prostitution, etc. Psychological, they live terrible situation and have been through a lot of pain, losses, and death, which cause a big increase in mental health issues, such as severe depression, anxiety. Financial, they escape to other countries, including Lebanon, in which the living conditions are very difficult due to high cost of living, high prices, and high rents. And we have to mention the lack of services in all different levels, medical, hygiene, food. Our state, it's in debt, under debt, and uh, we can't help enough the huge number in Lebanon, uh, we can't, we can't, it's a huge for a, a small country. I was telling Neville, we have a small country, we have small infrastructure, some schools and some hospital. Sometimes women, pregnant women, can't find a place to give birth. Sometimes they give birth in the street. It's an uh, incredible situation. Our needs also are huge psychological needs, which include psychological first aid, social support, social interve intervention at different levels, family dynamics and the structure, children behaviors, 
children are traumatized, like said Excellency, awareness concerning their rights, health issues, parental roles, <laughs> all these are destroyed, gender-based violence, Many, many of these women are bitten by her husband because this crisis involves this uh, situation. Humanitarian assistance, as we said before, a big number of Syrian displaced escape to other countries without taking any of their stuff, even their clothes. Yeah, we need a lot of uh, support, and I would like in this day, in this big event, thanks from deep of my heart to the aid of the church in need. Is um, one of the NGO who help us a lot to improve our presence with this refugee. I would like to express them and their benefactors my gratitude, asking God to bless them and their big heart and efforts to help others. Because of their support, we are able to provide some services and plus. It's clear that the provided services are very few relative to the needs. That's why we are looking to increase our work with the refugees. We value the prayers and generosity of each of you to continue our witnesses to Jesus Christ, our Lord, on being his compassionate presence with our sisters and brothers in need. And I would like to end my talk with a small idea and my opinion about the persecution of the minorities and some life stories. As you know, the Middle East is forcing a difficult situation. Where we are living troubles, the Christian have been suffering for many reasons as they are minority and are not able to help themselves. For example, cases have happened that people of many families have been kidnapped for a ransom. It became a kind of business and taking advantage of their houses and properties. Raped, beaten, and left to die if no care is taken. Usually, they kidnap the oldest child in the family. I'm speaking about Iraq mainly. If it so happens that the child is a girl, then it is a huge disaster for the family. I am a witness day by day. I, I am hearing a life story from women. You know, women trust a lot of the religious. They came freely without any um, fear and they spoke friendly with us. We are two sisters in this clinic. They tell us about every details in her life, even if they are bitten by their husband or something else. They came without any fear. And uh, they like the religious, they like the Virgin Mary, behind our, uh, their religions, they don't care. And some of the story, a woman is a beneficiary that have been followed during the past year and the half. She is 30 years old and left Iraq with her husband and the three kids. After the religious persecution for three months, intimidation, death threats, aggressivity from other religious parts, she stayed in home, in her home in Iraq, because she preferred to stay in home country. But after two weeks, her son has been kidnapped, and kidnappers asked for $20,000, $20,000. She didn't know anything about her son until she collected the son and paid it to the kidnappers. And the next day, she traveled to Lebanon to escape persecution and to avoid kidnapping one of her children again. She came to us after three months. She got to Lebanon. We provide psychological support for the mother through the social interviews, 
psychological support for the family through home visits and psychological care for the kidnapped son with the psychologist. Now, like many, many, many of Iraqi's family, the family lives in USA after staying in Lebanon for almost two years. Another story, interesting story, this one, because a mixed marriage in uh, the Middle East is not often, but it happens. A woman who is uh, 33 years old, Iraqi woman, that has been followed two years ago. She and her husband are from different religion. From the first day, they have been persecuted for this difference, but never harmed until they cut to Lebanon after an attempt of murder by the close family. She came to us to provide her a safe place to stay. We referred her to a safe region and provided social and psychological support of her and her husband because they have been in a lot of misery and persecution and they were depressed. Now they are living in Australia and they have one baby. Many, many stories like that, but this one touched me a lot. And I can't forget the face of this girl. All my life, I can't forget it. She is 31 years old. He came to our dispensary to meet the doctor because he was a problem. She is speechless, can't speak anymore. And the doctor, after examining her, said that she needs psychological treatment because she has deep problems. She was kidnapped and raped seven times by seven men. We directed her to a psychologist who took care of her for a year and a half. Two months after, he started a little bit to speak. He became more and more relaxed and talking. She's got her visa and she is at present in the USA. As I told you, I can't forget the face of these girls. For me, Christian, yes, they are persecuted because they are minority maybe. But for me, Iraq also is a big challenge. It's the, the genocide of the 21st century. The barbary act that have taken place in Iraq, it's inhuman, incredible acts of barbary. And many other story like that every day in Lebanon. I would like to quote to end my word with this word of our Holy Father, the Pope. Let no effort be spared for guaranteeing humanitarian assistance to those who were affected by this terrible conflict, in particular to refugees in this country and to numerous refugees in their neighborhood country. May the possibility to attribute the necessary help be guaranteed to humanitarian agents engaged to relieve the suffering of these people. And uh, I'd like to end by a prayer, my talk with you this afternoon, asking God to help us to remain in this Middle East who is suffering a lot. God of hope, inspire the leaders to choose peace instead of violence, to seek the reconciliation with their enemies, inspire compassion to the universal church for the people of the Middle East and give us a promise of a future of peace based on the justice. We ask it from you by Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace and Light of the World. Amen.